Hello, welcome back to Paul Stuff. This is my space on YouTube where I get to talk about all the things I love. Lots of Star Wars, lots of lightsabers. Today's Star Wars related. Um, <clears throat> a few weeks ago, months ago, I uh, did a review of the white um, Sith Wayfinder that had just been released from... Um, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, Disney Parks. Uh, it was released on May the 4th this year, 2023. And when it released, there were two. There's a white one and a black one. Uh, if you watch my review on the white one, you'll see um, that these are sold by Disney as a blind box. Not going to go into that here, but basically you don't know which one you're going to get. Um, and I, back when I got the white one, I did a full function test of the white Wayfinder. Um, and I've just got hold of the black one. And I thought I would do a full function test of this as well. These are 99% the same. There are three differences, as far as I can tell, between the black Wayfinder and the white find, Wayfinder. Um, the, the most obvious one is the colour. Um, the next is that the white one, when it's turned on, will glow blue. And this one glows green. Um, the other... Um, difference between them is that the emperor will uh, after it's been idle for a little while it will play the emperor's laugh the black one plays darth vader's breathing so i'm going to leave this for a while now and talk about the crystals while we wait for it to to do the darth vader breathing and you'll see that then it's part of the function test so we have to hear it doing darth vader's breathing um but what we've also got in shot here is a full set of um uh the kyber crystals from um disney galaxy's edge parks so if you're going to buy the wayfinder and you don't have any of the crystals it will not do very much um, basically what you're seeing it do now is what it will do it will light up uh, with the green glow at the top and after a certain amount of time, it will play Darth Vader's breathing. You need the crystals really to get any sort of functionality beyond that out of this. Um, or the white one. Um, they're both the same in that respect. So you need the crystals. Um, uh, in terms of the crystals, there are 17 different crystals. Um, there are actually two different cuts of each of the characters. Uh, these crystals have a character a attached to them. Um, so I'll just run through those crystals quickly. There are four red ones. These are Sith crystals. Um, they have characters for Darth Vader, um, Darth Sidious or the Emperor, Count Dooku and Darth Maul. So that's uh, the, the first four red ones here. There's also the black crystal. And we have Darth Vader's breathing. Uh, we also have the, the black crystal, which um, it has uh, is associated with Supreme Leader Snoke. Um, we have two... Uh, force guidance crystals these are also known as eight ball crystals they kind of work a bit like the old magic eight balls toys used to so um, you ask a question in the hot well they, this is how they work in the holocron so i don't think they work like that with the um the sith wayfinder but in the holocrons um, their functionality is that you ask a question trigger the crystal in the holocron and um it will give you some sort of yes no answer 
sometimes it may say the force is with you the red one is darth vader the green one is yoda um forgot to mention these all work in the kyber crystal in the uh, the sith and jedi holocrons as well um and they also work to change the colors uh, and i believe the sounds in the savvy's workshop lightsabers so if we go on to the the the, uh, the other crystals we can't see the colors really at the back here but there are two white crystals um they are Ahsoka Tano and Chira Inwe. Then there are two yellow crystals, Maz Katana and the Jedi Temple Guard. Two blue crystals, um, that's Obi-Wan Kenobi and Luke Skywalker. It's the older Luke from the sequel movies. Two green crystals, which is Qui-Gon Jinn and Yoda. And two purple crystals, which are two different versions of Mace Windu. So. As you can see, the Darth Vader breathing will repeat. Um, it will repeat every three minutes or so. Um, for about ten minutes, and I, I think, and then it turns itself off. Um, so these crystals all work in the holocrons as well. I have videos of them working in the holocrons. When you put them in the holocrons, you get the voice of the character on them. They don't work like that with the Sith Wayfinder. Um, when you present them to the, the Sith Wayfinder, they tell you something about a planet associated with that character. So... The first one we have here is, is a red one. This is Darth Vader. And in order to trigger the, um, the Wayfinder, we just place the crystal in front of it. And as you can see, it's now glowing red and playing some tunes. And then eventually we get a pattern of dots on the side. And the dots are supposedly tracing a pattern to a pathway to the planet that this is going to talk about. Mustafar is a bleak world of stark black rock and bright lava seas that occupies an unstable orbit between two massive gas giants deep in the outer rim. So as you can see, it's talking about Mustafar, which is where Darth Vader's castle is. Mustafar is a hostile and dangerous planet, but also a valuable one. Its molten oceans and superheated mantle are mined for rich minerals by the Techno Union and other corporations. And if we represent the crystal, Darth Vader built a grim castle on Mustafar. That will play something else. Inside its walls, about he meditated on the dark side of this the force, planet, channeling his rage and pain to gain power as a Sith. I can't remember whether it's three or Vader four. Vader chose Mustafar as his sanctum because four different pieces of dialogue for each crystal. The planet was the site of his fateful duel with Obi Wan Kenobi, a confrontation that left Vader burned and maimed. So this is, uh, that's uh, the Darth Vader crystal. Next we have the uh, Darth Sidious or um, the Emperor crystal. The crystals do have different cuts as well. So you can see that this crystal is... Um, different to the last one and now we're tracing a different path because we're going to a different planet this is a full function test I am going to go through all 17 of the crystals so it's likely to be a lengthy video and if you've already watched the white one it's the same thing in the mid rim shared by the native gungans and humans who migrated there from the heart of the galaxy so we've gone to naboo ago. which is the home planet of palpatine naboo's 
human culture is governed by an elected monarch, most often a young woman, believing them to possess a unique purity and wisdom that adults lack. Sheev Palpatine was born on Naboo and served as his planet's senator while secretly studying the dark side of the Force and under the guise of Sith Lord Darth Sidious. Sidious' dual identity wasn't discovered until the last days of the Clone Wars, when he used his powers as Chancellor Palpatine to order the destruction of the Jedi and declare himself Emperor. Let's, um... That's the Emperor's Crystal. Next we have Count Dooku. Now we'll show you something different with the Count Dooku Crystal. Um, as I said before, they are different cuts on the crystal. So you can see this one is a different shape to the previous one. But if we put the crystal where it triggers and leave it, it will actually play through all four of the, the dialogues, one after the other. Again, we've got a different pathway because we're going to a different planet. Serena is a mountainous world located amid a scattering of wealthy planets just off the muddy Hydean Way trade route in the galaxy's outer rim. Sereno's nobles are divided into eight great houses that compete with each other but close ranks against outsiders. During the Clone Wars, the planet was ruled by House Sereno's Count Dooku. Dooku was once a great Jedi Master, but he left the order to claim his noble title and rule his home world, then later became the leader of the Separatists. Warships and battle droids protected Sereno during the Clone Wars, giving Dooku a secure base where he plotted the Separatists' military and political maneuvers. Sereno is a mountainous world located amid a scattering of wealthy planets just off the muddy Hydean we'll way just play through again. in the galaxy's outer rim. So let's see, Count Dooku crystal. Now all of these crystals are blind box as well. So if you buy a red one, you could get any one of the four red crystals or the black crystal um, there are various ideas on on how many uh, the black crystals are there um, compared to the red crystals I've heard anything from 10% to 50% so uh, you know you take your chances on these things. The only crystals you can buy where you know what you're getting are the two Force Guidance crystals. So this is Darth Maul. a legendary world in the Outer Rim's Quelly Sector, known as a haunt of witches and strange beasts. Its eerie landscapes lie beneath skies colored blood red by a dim, bloated sun. Dathomir is rich in life and shines like a beacon in the Force. Rankos prowl its tangled forests while its mountains hide secret lakes where ancient Leviathan fish dwell in darkness. The Night Sisters are a clan of powerful Force witches who live in Dathmere's swamps. They rule over the Night Brothers, Zabrak warriors whose villages are found in the planet's harsh badlands. Darth Maul fell into battle with Obi-Wan Kenobi on Naboo and was thought dead, but survived and went into exile. He eventually returned to Dathomir, where Night Sister Magic mended his shattered body and mind. That was the Darth Maul crystal. This is the black crystal. So this is the, the rare crystal that uh, everyone who's into these things talks about. 
Um, this is a genuine one. And this is associated with Snoke. Vaccine Station is an ancient construct orbiting a dying star deep in the outer rim. Centuries ago, it was used as an outpost by the fearsome Vaccine Warriors. The Vaccine Station was overrun sometime prior to the High Republic era by the Dringir, a species of sentient plants from wild space. The invading Dringir were then trapped in stasis by the Sith. The Dringir's captivity caused vegetation to engulf the Vaccine Station's central sphere, creating an eerie arboretum overgrown with mosses, grasses, and vines. The First Order's Supreme Leader Snoke used Vaccine Station as a retreat, meditating on the Force amid its bizarre plant life. He lured Ben Solo there and encouraged the vulnerable boy to embrace the dark side. The Vaccine Station is an ancient construct orbiting a dying star deep in the Outer Rim. So Centuries the, ago, uh, was used as an outpost by the fierce of the Vaccine Warriors. The Black Crystal. Um, as I say, these, these are blind box. And um, one thing that people have done in the past to be able to, to build a collection of these is to use an RFID tag reader, writer. <clears throat> to uh, rewrite the code on the crystal now um, that works okay with the uh, with the crystals when you're using them with the lightsabers and the holocrons um, but it may not work with the wayfinders um, I'll leave a link in the description there is an excellent video uh, up on, on YouTube about why this won't work. I won't go into the details of it, um, but it's to do with the coding on the crystal. Um, this is the, the Darth Vader Force Guidance Crystal, and you can see there is a slight difference in the red, I think, in these crystals. They're, they're in the colour. They're, these are a, a more a sort of metallic-y red. <laughs> But as we'll see from these crystals, they don't work as a force guidance crystal with the wayfinder. They work the same as the other crystals. They just have a different dialogue attached to them. Steeped in the dark side, Malachor is a lonely planet on the galaxy's edge. It was the site of an ancient war between the Jedi and the Sith, a terrible conflict whose echoes can still be felt in the Force. Malachor's surface is a waste of petrified ash broken by stone pyramids. This wasteland conceals a subterranean Sith temple which was destroyed during the Empire's rule. Lore about Malachor was restricted to the wisest Jedi Masters for fear of awakening slumbering Sith perils. Younger Jedi were forbidden to visit the planet or inquire into its secrets. Darth Vader confronted his former Padawan Ahsoka Tano on Malachor, defeating her in a lightsaber duel, but Tano survived by escaping into a strange force realm known as the World Between Worlds. Steeped in the dark side, Malachor is a lonely planet on the galaxy's edge. It was the site of an ancient war between the Jedi and the Sith, a terrible conflict whose echoes can still be felt in the Force. Malachor's surface is a waste of petrified ash broken by stone pyramids. This wasteland conceals a subterranean Sith temple which was destroyed during the Empire's rule. Lore about Malachor was restricted to the wisest Jedi Masters for fear of awakening slumbering Sith perils. Younger Jedi were forbidden to visit the planet or inquire Sorry, into Sorry, I let that go along. I've lost track of where we were with that. 
So that's the, the Darth Vader Force Guidance Crystal. That's all of the red crystals now. We're moving on to the, the light side crystals or the Jedi crystals. So this is the Yoda for Force Guidance Crystal. Again, you can see there's a, a slightly sort of metallic -y look. Now, when we present this crystal, the colour will change. So the, the colour that the Wayfinder glows will match the colour of the crystal. Uncharted world deep within the outer rim, Dagobah is a swampy planet teeming with plant and animal life, making it a wellspring of the living force. During the Clone Wars, the spirit of Qui-Gon Jinn called Yoda to Dagobah and encouraged his old teacher to seek out the mysteries of the cosmic force. Yoda sought exile on Dagobah after the destruction of the Jedi Order, spending years in solitude, meditating on the Force and awaiting a new hope for the galaxy. Luke Skywalker learned the mysteries of the Jedi on Dagobah and then returned to witness Yoda's death and passage into the Force. An uncharted world deep within the Outer Rim, Dagobah is a swampy planet teeming with plant and animal life, making it a wellspring of the living force. That's the Yoda um, Force Guidance Crystal. We'll move on to the white crystals. Um, the first of these I'm going to show you is Ahsoka Tano. Now we can see that the colour has changed to white because we have a white crystal. world located near the Hydean Way. Mandalore is home to clans of proud warriors who value honor above all other things. Mandalore was once a beautiful planet, but an ancient war devastated its forests and fields, transforming them into silent wastes of ash and sand. During the Clone Wars, Duchess Satine Kreese renounced Mandalore's violent past and sought to walk the path of peace. But she was slain by Maul, who became the planet's new ruler. In the last days of the Clone Wars, Ahsoka Tano confronted Maul on Mandalore, leading Mandalorian rebels against fighters loyal to Maul, known as Death Watch. The ravaged world located near the Hydean Way. Mandalore is home to clans of proud warriors who value honor above all other things. That's uh, Ahsoka Tano. The second of the white characters is Chirrut Imwe. Another different cut of crystal there. There are four cuts of crystals. And each of these characters has two cuts. So if you wanted to collect all of them, you need to collect two crystals for, for Ahsoka, two for Chirrut Imwe, two for Darth Vader, etc. The only ones, again, that are different are the, um, uh, are the uh, Force Guidance crystals. Jeddah is a lonely moon in a forgotten corner of the galaxy. A destination for those seeking lost lore about ancient Force traditions. Jeddah was a poor world by the time of the Empire's reign, but ages ago it was a center of Jedi wisdom and tradition, visited by pilgrims from across the galaxy. 
Partisans fought the Empire for control of Jeddah, trying to stop Imperial forces from carrying away kyber crystals mined in the moon's secret heart. A blind guardian of the wills, Chiru Dimwe defended Jeddah's ancient holy city and barely escaped the cataclysm that reduced the metropolis to fire and dust. Jeddah is a lonely moon in a forgotten corner of the galaxy, a destination for those seeking lost lore about ancient uh, forces. As you can see, if you leave the crystal in front of the wayfinder, it will just keep going through its um, its its different pieces of dialogue. Always place the same four pieces of dialogue for each crystal, um, and always place them in the same order. <laughs> So this is the first of our yellow crystals. This is, I believe, Maz Kanata. yellow crystal is the Jedi Temple Guard. And obviously if you if you just present the crystal and take it away it will just play the first piece of dialogue once it's gone through the pathway to the planet. is um, one of the crystal cups for the Jedi Guard. Coruscant is a planet-sized city located in the galaxy's core. It has served as the capital of galactic civilization for many thousands of years. Coruscant has been the Jedi and then each time you present the crystal it will generations of force play the next the piece of the were brought to the mighty Jedi temple to take their first steps along the Jedi path. Coruscant's Jedi temple is almost unimaginably ancient, a labyrinth of training halls, archives, vaults, and galleries that serve as a storehouse of the Order's wisdom and force lore. The legendary temple god defends the Jedi Order. Guardians' masks and robes symbolize their emotional detachment and their surrender of everything except their commitment to the Order. Coruscant is a planet-sized city located in the galaxy's core. It has served as a That's capital a of yellow the civilization for Mask many Kanata thousands and of years. The Jedi temple guard. Next, we move on to the blue crystals. Uh, this is Luke Skywalker. Now, this is old Luke from the sequels. Cut for that crystal. See, now we've gone to blue. The Wayfinder does play the uh, um, route 
on both sides. Up two is a lost world located deep in the galaxy's unknown regions, far from any trade route and considered a myth by most explorers and historians. Some seekers of the Force law believe the Jedi Order was founded on Uptu, with the very first Jedi Temple rising from the cliffs of a sacred island somewhere on the planet. Uptu is a moody world of stormy seas, whose scattered islands are home to herds of gentle Thala sirens, flocks of chubby porgs, and villages of bird-like Lanai. Luke Skywalker retreated to Octu after abandoning his dream of rebuilding the Jedi Order, living as a hermit on its sacred island until the scavenger Ray interrupted his solitude. Octu is a lost world located deep in the galaxy's unknown regions, far from any trade route and considered a myth by most explorers and historians. So that's the Luke Blue Crystal. Uh, the second blue crystal is Obi-Wan Kenobi. Tatooine is a harsh desert world of sand dunes and baking rock that orbits twin suns in the galaxy's outer rim. During the Republic's final years, Tatooine was a lawless world controlled by the Huts. It remained in a haven for smugglers, outlaws, and fugitives under Imperial rule. Far from spaceport cities such as Mos Eisley, tough settlers eked out a living on Tatooine's moisture farms, trading with Jawas and keeping a wary eye out for prowling Tusken raiders. Obi-Wan Kenobi retreated to Tatooine after the Jedi's fall. He watched over Luke Skywalker and awaited a day the boy would be ready to learn the ways of the Force. Tatooine is a harsh desert world of sand dunes That's and baking blue crystals. orbits twin Obi -Wan suns Kenobi the and the galaxy's outer rim. Can. On to green crystals. Uh, so this first one is Yoda. I've gone green. Kashyyyk is a lush homeworld to the Wookiees, a forest planet covered in gigantic trees large enough to hold small cities. Kashyyyk grows more dangerous as you descend from the tops of the Rorschach trees to the darkness of the forest floor. Even Wookiee warriors fear the stealthy predators of the lowermost levels. One of the last battles of the Clone Wars was fought on Kashyyyk, with Jedi Master Luminara and Dooley fighting alongside Yoda, Republic troops, and Wookiee militia. Kashyyyk is a lush homeworld to the Wookiees, a forest planet covered in gigantic trees large enough to hold small cities. So there we go, that's uh, the Yoda crystal, which takes us to Kashyyyk. Yoda being at the Battle of Kashyyyk. The second of the green crystals is Qui-Gon Jinn. A 
beautiful green world, Naboo sits amid a tangle of star systems near the borders of the Outer Rim, and is known for his love of art and culture. Naboo is home to intelligent amphibians known as the Gungans, who share their homeworld with human settlers who migrated there from the center of the galaxy. Most planets have molten cores, but Naboo's interior is hollow, a honeycomb of caves and tunnels haunted by strange and dangerous creatures. Jedi Master Qui-Gon Jinn and his Padawan Obi-Wan Kenobi dueled the Sith apprentice Darth Maul during the Battle of Naboo, with Qui-Gon dying at Maul's hands. A beautiful green world, Naboo sits amid a tangle of star systems it's near the Qui-Gon borders Jinn? of the Outer Rim, and is known for his love of art and culture. Um, we're on to our last colour of crystals now. These are the purple ones. These are both associated with um, Mace Windu. Um, <clears throat> Mace Windu being one of the only characters, if not the only character, to wield a purple lightsaber. I'm not going to get into that with you. Um, it's certainly the only character in the movies that we've seen with a, a purple lightsaber. Um, and so the purple crystals are all... Mace Windu, we're glowing purple. Geonosis is located in the outer rim near Tatooine and encircled by a ring of dangerous tumbling debris. The planet's mesas and badlands are home to hives of Geonosians, an insect species famous for their skill at creating droids, vehicles, and weapons of terrifying power. The factories of Geonosis made battle droids for the Separatists during the Clone Wars. Later, the Empire secretly built the first Death Star in orbit above the planet. The Clone Wars began on Geonosis, when Mace Windu and Yoda led a task force of Jedi and clone troopers into battle against the former Jedi Count Dooku and his Separatist battle droids. The harsh, rocky world of Geonosis is located in the Outer Rim near Tatooine and encircled by a ring of dangerous tumbling debris. That's the first of the purple crystals. Second one, again, is Mace Windu, um, but it will take us to a different destination. <laughs> center of the galaxy, Coruscant is the heart of galactic civilization, a vibrant planet entirely covered by a massive metropolis that is home to trillions of beings. Coruscant's glittering uppermost levels are home to the galaxy's super rich, but its lowermost levels are dim, dangerous places where forgotten people struggle to survive. Coruscant was the capital of both the Republic and the Empire. It was also the center of Jedi power, with the ancient Jedi Temple serving as the Order's headquarters. Mace Windu nearly destroyed the Sith Lord Darth Sidious in a confrontation on Coruscant, but Anakin Skywalker's interference allowed Sidious to fight back and kill Windu. Located near the center of the galaxy, Coruscant is the heart of galactic civilization, well, there we go. a vibrant planet entirely covered by a massive metropolis that is home that's, to trillions uh, of beings. That's the full functionality of the black Sith Wayfinder. 
Uh, so if you, thank you if you've sat through that. These are long videos by the nature of them. There are 17 different crystals with four different um, pieces of dialogue for each crystal. That's 68 different pieces of dialogue that this thing will play. Um, it takes a while to go through those. Plus, um, I also wanted to show you the Darth Vader breeding because that is one of the differences between this and the white um, Wayfinder. Um, they are effectively exactly the same, um, exactly the same piece. Uh, as, as I said at the beginning, the three differences are this one will um, glow green. It plays Darth Vader's breathing um, and it's this sort of really nice black metallic -y look. The white one um, glows blue. It plays uh, the Emperor's laugh and it has a, a light grey weathered finish instead of the black weathered finish. So they are more or less the same thing. Um, unless you really want both of them, then they one or the other will probably do, you know. Um, do bear in mind, as I said at the beginning, that you need the crystals to get this functionality out of them. Without the crystals, um, they will just sit and glow like this and then play uh, either Darth Vader's breathing or the Emperor's laugh at about three minute intervals. Um, so that's our Sith Wayfinder in uh, the darker Darth Vader version. Um, once again, as I say, thank you for for uh, sitting through this. Um, they are by nature a long video because of the, the level of functionality in them. It is one nice thing about these toys from Galaxy's Edge. Um, if you have all of the crystals, you do get a lot of functionality out of them and a lot of dialogue out of them. Um, but that is the full function video for the Black Wayfinder. If you have liked the video, please do give it a, a thumbs up. Um, if you have any questions about the Wayfinders, please do leave them in the, in, the, um, in the comments section. I'll do my best to answer them. If you like the content on the channel, um, then, then please do consider subscribing to the channel. Um, we're approaching around 500 members, uh, 500 subscriptions at the minute, which is great. Um, the more subscriptions there are, the more likely it is that, um, that uh, YouTube will put these videos in other people's feeds and, and uh, the videos will become more popular. Um, my only reason for doing that is to get the information on these things out to more, more people. Um, this is a fun channel. It's a hobby channel. It's not a channel that I'm looking to make money from. It's here purely for my enjoyment of sharing my knowledge and information and for you guys to benefit from the knowledge and information that I, I have to share. So thank you again for watching this far in this mammoth long video. Um, it's around about three quarters of an hour. So if you have watched it all, thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. Um, but for now, that's everything for today. So I'll say cheerio and I'll see you again soon.